governments. So there are uh, 10 fundamental principles of our governments. Uh, so we'll go one by one. So first thing, uh, you have to walk in the neutral postures. So proper posture maintenance is uh, very important. If you are walking uh, for a long time with the C curve, it can cause uh, the strain and uh, therefore uh, the proper alignment of the neck, hand and wrist, they are very important. <laughs> Second principle is you should reduce the excessive force. So excessive pressure or the force at a joint can cause the injury. Suppose something is, is to be tightened or something is to be picked up or something is to be grasped. So excessive pressure should not be there on at the joints. So it is better to minimize the work which requires more physical labor and needs more force at the joint. Third principle is uh, keep everything within the reach. So uh, this way uh, we are keeping uh, the things at a proper place as I told uh, the, everything is in place and there is a place for everything. So uh, we will avoid uh, unneeded stretching and the strain. Uh, so more or less, uh, this is also uh, the whole principle is also related to the good posture, maintaining the good posture while working either uh, in the sitting position or in the standing position. Uh, previously, we have seen we should avoid uh, to work for a long time in the seat position. The fourth principle is uh, one should work at the proper height. So um, working at the right height makes the things easier. Uh, so sometimes suppose uh, you have to work at a height which is above your headroom. So you may have to use uh, the proper screws or extension. And uh, we, we, we should uh, avoid uh, extensions of uh, taking the help of the chair or table because it can be one can uh, you know step down because they can topple. Okay. Next principle is uh, reduce the excessive motions. So sometimes we have to uh, you know tighten a thing. So you have to repeated motions are needed. So this repeated motion can cause the you know numbness. Uh, in the long run motion. So instead of using the manual tools for tightening, we should use the uh, tools with the, uh, which are operated with power or uh, rheumatic. Uh, next principle is minimize the fatigue and the fatigue load. So uh, fatigue uh, means uh, the feeling of tiredness. So fatigue is common in the work which causes the uh, strain. So uh, uh, if you hold a thing for a long period of time, so uh, the static load is there. It is uh, like this, suppose the liberal is working and he is carrying some bricks or some uh, load at his head for a long time. So it is a static load, so which will cause the fatigue. So fatigue can be reduced by the intervals and the breakdown between the work. So one can work for some time, then can take some break, and then uh, the work can be resumed. So similarly, uh, uh, a pattern can be followed, which will reduce the fatigue. Uh, <clears throat> Next is uh, minimize the pressure points. So uh, it is important to be aware of uh, what are the pressure points. So almost everyone has to sit on the chair uh, which has cushion uh, so there is a pressure point uh, you know behind me which happens if air is too high or when you can dangle your legs so pressure point is created between your also between your thighs and the bottom of the table and where you sit on the chair so one can use the anti fatigue mats or insole can be used so it is just like you might have seen if you have to drive the car for a long time. So you need some good quality of cushions or anti-fatigue mats, uh, you know, yeah, uh, underneath 
so that you don't feel tiredness. Next principle is provide clearance. So uh, watch area should have the uh, things arranged neatly and cleanly. So it should have enough clearance. So um, worker need not to worry about the bumps uh, that have to encounter on the daily basis. So if somebody is doing, uh, you know, climbing up the stairs, so he knows what are the steps, and so he he can avoid overstepping. Okay. So this is the meaning of providing the here. Next principle is move, exercise, and stretch yourself in between. So move and stretch when you can. So it is always better to take some interval between the walks and the and you stretch and move along. So stretching technique uh, uh, will differ and depend upon the uh, work which one does. Okay. Uh, and the last principle is maintain a comfortable uh, working environment. So this principle focuses on the other component of working environment like lighting, space, temperature, that is cool air or hot air and many more. Okay. So these are the 10 important principles which are involved uh, while designing a work design for, uh, with the ergonomics principle or we have to take care of. Now what are the advantages of ergonomics? Uh, there is a reduction of uh, work related injuries and higher safety. So naturally if a workbench or a working area is uh, you know and properly designed and uh, taking into account uh, all these principles which we have just discussed. So there will be less injury and uh, because of the higher safety aspect, the injury may not be always there. Uh, it increases the uh, productivity, it increases the quality of the work, it reduces the absenteeism and a better design of the machine. So disadvantages, uh, because if you are providing uh, more comfort and more facility, so it will cost money. So naturally, uh, to have a good thing, you have to spend money, but it's disadvantages. Usually, take more time and resources uh, than other methods, okay? So if you work uh, with safety, so naturally you will be working slightly slowly. So you will be using the more time and resources. So very high efforts in planning, recruiting and executing than other methods. So uh, it is uh, a time taking process. Much longer study period and therefore it requires much goodwill among the participants. Okay. So these are the, some of the limitations you can say of the different languages. So uh, application. Uh, uh, assist in design and operation of man machine and environmental study. It helps to know about the human activity, capability, and the limitations. It helps to ensure the physical and mental use of the human being. So, uh, the, this is a you know, reminder. So, ergo reminders. And uh, you see here, keep close the elbows close to your side. Uh, keep your wrist comfortably straight. So this is the wrong position. This is the right. Avoid reaching out uh, for the mouse or the keyboard. Okay. So this is wrong. So this is the right uh, posture. Similarly, mm, good or bad tilt. So a negative tilt allows the wrist to be in the neutral position. Okay. So correct and incorrect technique. So this is a correct technique of uh, lifting. This is an incorrect technique of lifting. Similarly, uh, here you see uh, 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 sparing uh, uh, material handling equipment or a, a manual plane is there. So he is lifting it. Uh, so uh, instead of this, we, we can use this. This is the wrong way. This is the right way. This slide we have discussed earlier. Also. So move. So these are the uh, ergo reminder again. Take a walk, deliver a message to the person. Okay, stretch 
and uh, this is uh, you know uh, strengthen your fingers with the rubber band and break through don't uh, forget to take a break of course this is not the <laughs> correct way of sitting in the office but the idea is that you should take break from the uh, your workplace now uh, because of the ergonomic injury a very uh, important uh, disorder we call it as msd or musculoskeletal disorder msd so it is very important and it is uh, because of the ergonomic injury so ergonomic injuries or msd can affect the muscles nerves tendons ligaments joints cartilage and the spine disc so msd is also known as a uh, repetitive motion injury suppose somebody is pressing a you know uh, pump pump knob uh, again and again so he is doing he is uh, moving his uh, fist uh, again and again so it is a repetitive uh, sort of work so msd is are the condition that can affect the muscles joints and bone msds are caused due to individual risk factor or ergonomic risk factor msds are single largest category of the work injuries and they are responsible for almost 30% of the all the workers compensation cost so oh, maximum uh, you know compensation cost is because of this uh, musculoskeletal disorder uh individual risk factor including age nutrition activity etc while ergonomic risk factor includes uh, the tasks which have high reputation awkward uh, use of the awkward body posture for a long period of time suppose sometimes you have to work you know on below the ground level or at the very height uh, with a small space so this uh, you have to put your body in the awkward position so awkward posture uh, will cause uh, this uh, problem sitting in the same posture and lifting the heavy weights so these are the symptoms of msd um, muscle uh, fatigue or pain aching burning numbness numbness in which you you get don't get oxygen for a short moment of time depression then uh, stiffness and tingling so examples of msd uh, tendonitis and inflammation of the tendon uh, typically occurs in shoulder wrist hands or elbow uh, then carpal tunnel syndrome tts this is also very important the irritation of the median nerve which runs through a bony bony channel in the wrist called the carpal tunnel usually results from excessive flexing or twisting of the uh, wrist so you see here as uh, uh, cts syndrome or you can say carpal tunnel syndrome so this is a carpal uh, ligament okay so these are the tendons these are the tendons and this is a, a yellow one it is a median nerve okay so uh, this kind of uh, ring is formed so it is known as the carpal tunnel uh, syndrome so it is because of the twisting and all so uh, trigger finger syndrome tendons in the finger becomes inflamed causing pain swelling and loss of dexterity i say the eye becomes strain as a result of poor lighting glare or viewing from the upper position so i strain the nerve as we uh, feel uh, when we are working for a long time in front of the screen or uh, with the mobiles or the ipads and all that okay. and then hand arm vibration syndrome uh, so tingling numbness blanching loss of dexterity in the hand arm then muscle strain causes a pain in the muscle so what are the administrative controls employee rotation job task expansion so what do, what do you mean by this employee rotation means we we should keep on 
uh, changing the employee on the same job. Okay, so that is also known as the employee rotation and uh, job task expansion. So we should keep on changing the task. So that is also known as the uh, uh, the job task expansion. Physical adjustment to the workspace. Um, that means if you are working for a long time, say you are driving. So for a time being, you you can have a, you know. Uh, for five or ten minutes, you can have to break. Redesign of the work methods. So, work methods can be redesigned. Alternative task, we can uh, avoid that task which involves too much of fatigue, and we can have the break. So, these are the administrative control for avoiding the. Now, work practice control, uh, safe and proper work techniques and uh, procedures. Training of the worker and the physical condition conditioning period. So here we can see it is a wrong uh, posture. So it is a right posture. So first he will sit and then he will pick up the posture. The posture and angle. So whether uh, you your tasks are performed while sitting or standing, always maintain a proper posture and angle. And avoid the awkward positions and the extreme reaches for the material. So you see here, and the person is working on a tree field. So he, this is the wrong way. So more angles about the angles. So this 30 to 35 degree. Okay, this angle if you are working in front of your screen. Okay. So, 0 to 60 degree sitting posture. Okay. So, body angles, these are important. So, A is the head. So, head should be at the 40 degree. Uh, B is shoulders. So, 20 degree keep on rotating. Elbows, 70 to 35, 135. Hands uh, in this position, then waist 90 to uh, 120, legs and feet. So these are the body angles which are important from the ergonomic point of view. So engineering control, so you can design the workstation, you can use the proper tools and equipment, and you can provide the good health facility. The workstation, the objective is to fit the workstation to the employee, reduce the awkward position. So this can be done by using two methods. Uh, one is a standard way and another is the innovative way. So in the standard way, adjustable workstation, adjustable chair, footrest, uh, we can provide footrest, we can provide the adjustable monitor in which we can uh, change the position of the monitor and document holder so that the things are in, uh, in place. The innovative way, uh, cut, off, cut the legs off, avoid blocks, uh, build footrest, okay. thick book, uh, we can use the thick books, and uh, build platform. Okay. So these are some of the innovative ways uh, of uh, improving the book. So this, this you can see provided ergonomic. Now tools. So use of the force or of the grip and strength, longer or shorter and thicker or thinner handles. So this we have discussed uh, uh, in the previous lecture that uh, the handle of the screwdriver it should be the length and it should be the thin. Repetitive motions. Uh, for repetitive motion, ratcheting mechanism or the gears. Uh, ratcheting means it can have a ratchet mechanism, that means the motion is locked in the other side. Okay? Or we can have a gear for the smaller movement so that with the small effort, the great distance is made. Then the power tools we can use. So we can use the electric stapler, we can use the electric knife, we can use the spring loaded return. All these power tools we can use. 
Similarly, in the awkward position, uh, bent or the curled handles we can give uh, in order to avoid the awkward position. Extension or add ons. Then uh, uh, we can use the headphones. We can support the equipment uh, overheads. We can use the step to stool. Then forceful exertions. Uh, uh, for the forceful, where the forceful exertion is there. Top touch keyboard and the uh, buttons and lifting them. Okay. So the lifting device will cause the less uh, force to pick up a particular thing. Now, uh, facility, so we can have uh, the lighting and glare. So this should be avoided. Uh, noise uh, is to be avoided. Exercise and sets. So there are exercise or the sets that can be performed at your workstation and home just about anywhere. So eye comfort exercise. You can blink your eyes. So it is always advisable to while working on PC. So the doctor says that you should keep on your eyes blinking after every uh, 60 seconds. Yawning, you can take some uh, oxygen from here. And focus change, so you can keep your focus moving. Then for eye calming while sitting, raise elbows on the edge of the desk. Let the weight uh, fall forward. Cuff the hand over eyes and close. Inhale slowly through your nose and hold for the four seconds. And continue for the deep breathing for 50 to 30 seconds. Okay. So the eye movements, close your eyes and slowly and gently move eyes up and up to the ceiling and slowly down to the floor. Repeat this three times. So close your eyes and slowly and gently and move eyes to left and then slowly to right. Repeat this three times. Okay. These all are the principles which are uh, you know helpful. And in the for the tools, so uh, for the static positions, which have an anti fatigue mat, as I told, for the case of the uh, you know sitting in the car. Then for vibration, one can have one can use the anti vibration materials, uh, anti vibration mounts or handles, and uh, external supports can be used, and anti vibration gloves can be used. And then next stretch, uh, tilt your ears toward the shoulder on both sides. Reach up and touch top of head with palm to hold the tilted position. Hold for 5 to 10 seconds and repeat this 2 to, two to 3 times. Okay. Reverse side also. So this is for the next exercise. So uh, we can see a small film here. Uh, on ergonomics, so that will make you clear what are the principles involved. So let me see if it works here. Otherwise, I will. Um, Hi, my name is Sean Jones II, and I'm a safety intern here at ASB. Today I will be taking you through a short video on workplace ergonomics. But before we get started, Let's talk about what ergonomics means. What is ergonomics? Ergonomics is defined as the science of fitting a workplace to the worker's needs. Hi, my name is Sean Jones II, and I'm a safety intern here at ASB. Today I will be taking you through a short video on workplace ergonomics. But before we get started, 
let's talk about what ergonomics means. What is ergonomics? Ergonomics is defined as the science of fitting a workplace to the worker's needs. In other words, it's about the body position you have in everyday tasks, from how you stand, bend, lift, reach, push, or pull. The goal is to increase efficiency and productivity while decreasing discomfort. And over the long term, practicing good ergonomics reduces the risk of serious tissue injury. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, ergonomics related injuries accounted for over 380,000 days away from work in 2013. One out of every three cases were because of an ergonomic issue. More specifically, these injuries related to our back which was 79% of work environment injuries to the 25 to 64 age group. The data tells us that ergonomics is a serious issue and it can affect people at almost any age. But by having ergonomic knowledge, you will make your day safer, more productive, and happier. Now that you know what it is and why it's important, I'll show you how you can use an understanding of basic biomechanics to improve your ergonomics at work. Standing is the first body position we will address. It is a great place to start because it is simple, yet most people do it incorrectly. Standing incorrectly can lead to sore feet and swollen legs. However, we can avoid this by adjusting our body position. Most importantly, choose shoes that are comfortable, provide arch support, and give your toes freedom to move. Safety toe shoes are crucial for working in a shop environment. Once you find proper shoes, Establish a comfortable standing position by bearing your weight primarily on the balls of your feet. Standing for a long period of time can increase the amount of pressure on your feet, eventually leading to soreness. We can avoid this by shifting our weight from either our heels to the toes or from one foot to another. Finally, let your arms hang naturally at your side and keep your back and shoulders pulled backwards. Next, if you are standing to perform a task, Make sure the work is facing you. Remember to not twist at the waist and keep the work to a comfortable height. This way, you do not have to bend your back to reach it. Everything should be within a comfortable reach from your standing position. When it comes to lifting, the heavier something is, the greater the risk. That's why our policy is no person can lift over 50 pounds by themselves. But even lifting less than 50 pounds this strain if done incorrectly. Here are some safety tips to keep in mind. First, have a wide base. Your feet should be shoulder width apart. Second, instead of leaning with your head and shoulders, push the pelvis back, then bend at the knee. Keep your back straight so the force you lift does not transfer to the muscles of your back. Once you lift the object, keep your elbows in and the load close to your body. This will give you greater stability by bringing your center of gravity close to your feet. By bringing in your elbows, you are letting your bicep muscles do the heavy lifting, which will make the load easier to carry. The same ergonomic thinking that goes into lifting applies to both pushing and pulling. Use your largest muscle group to make the task as easy as possible. For that reason, it is usually better to push than pull. That's because you can use your legs and keep your back straight. Here's how that should look. Position your feet shoulder width apart. Then take half a step forward with your dominant foot and bend your knees slightly. Keep your other leg straight. Then check that the head, shoulder, and hips are facing the same direction. When you're ready, lean towards the object, but keep your back and neck straight. Put both hands on the object and begin to apply an even amount of force from both hands. Let your body weight do the work. If you need more force, use the muscles in your rear leg. Pushing rather than pulling is always the safer way to move a load. Most importantly, never pull something that is out of position, low to the ground, high up, requires you to twist your body, or is too heavy to move comfortably. If pulling doesn't feel smooth, comfortable, and easy, stop immediately and find a different method. Believe it or not, you probably have been using a ladder improperly. Overreaching, 
standing two steps from the top and carrying tools while climbing might seem harmless at the time, but it can lead to serious ergonomic injury. Avoid poor ladder ergonomics by choosing the right ladder type and type. For example, if you're attempting to stand on the top steps of a ladder to do your task, get a taller ladder. Give yourself the stability and comfortability by standing at mid-height instead of the top of the ladder, which is the most unstable. Keep in mind, a fall of six feet is enough of a distance to cause injury or death. Lastly, make sure you evaluate the right body position for every task. If you can't bring the work onto a table for a comfortable body position, then you'll need to bring your body to the work. For example, I need to use this power tool to assemble parts on this sub assembly position below me. Instead of crouching or bending at the hips to start drilling, I can take an ergonomic mat, set it in front of the work, and rest my knees on it. In this position, my head, neck, and back are straight. My arms are in a comfortable position, and I can avoid putting stress on my lower back and knees on Yes, this takes a little bit more time, but it will keep me out of the doctor's office. The same applies for doing work above me. Rather than reach over my head, putting strain on my back, I can get a step stool or a boom lift to put my body in position to do the work comfortably at shoulder height. Remember the reason for ergonomics. It's to reduce stress and eliminate injury wherever you are. So take advantage of the lessons you learned from this video in the shop and at home. I'm Sean Jones II, safety intern here at ASC. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one. So I think you could see this. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for the uh, patient listening. Thank you.